Yes, please. Can we have those orders, Henry? Big, big win.
Yesterday evening, um, the transcript of a private hearing conducted immediately prior to the luncheon adjournment was inadvertently uploaded to the public transcript area of the Independent Commission Against Construction, Independent Commission Against Com Against Corruption. Corruption site. It touched on the relationship between Ms Berejiklian and Mr McGuire. On behalf of the Commission, I would like to apologise both to Ms Berejiklian and Mr McGuire for that inadvertent uploading. I should note that at the time that private transcript was uploaded, it was a subject of a section 112 order I had made at the outset of the hearing directing that the evidence given by Mr Maguire during that private um, hearing not be published in any manner. Subsequent to the Commission learning that that private transcript had been inadvertently uploaded, a further Section 112 order prohibiting the publication of the private evidence was made. It remains in force and it will remain in force and any publication of the material in that private transcript would be in a breach of the Independent Commission Against Corruption Act. I should also state that the Chief Commissioner has instructed that there be an internal investigation of how the private transcript came to be uploaded and also that the whole matter will be referred by the Commission to the Inspector of the Independent Commission Against Corruption. Yes, Mr Robertson. Commissioner, can I be heard on that issue? On what, Mr Moses? On what you've just said, if I may, Commissioner. Do you cavil with what I've just said? I don't, but I also just wanted to be clear yes. in respect of, because it related to my client. Yes. Sorry, Commissioner, can I be heard? Yes. Thank you. Because that was a matter of concern in relation to a violation of my client's privacy and her security as a result of the error made by this commission. I've proposed orders, which I provided to the solicitor, to the commission, which I understand Council Sistine took a copy of it. I understood they were giving you a copy of it. Yes. So do you have a copy of that order? What is the basis of the commission's power that you suggest well, this is could the issue. Well, this found is the issue. those orders? That's right. Well, this is the issue that we would like to work with the commission to consider whether your lawyers can assist you in respect of the scope of your powers to make those orders, which in effect, to ascertain whether First of all, this commission can ex exercise through its technology processes who downloaded the material. Well, at the moment, I understand that it cannot. I've been informed it cannot. It cannot. No. Okay. Well, the issue is that do you have the orders with you? I do. I'm looking yes, at them, you. Mr. Moses. So what, Mr. I'd, Moses, ask, so what yes. I'd ask, if I can be heard, yes. Commissioner, that those matters be the subject of consideration by the commission's lawyers during the course of this morning so that we can deal with the issue later today as to as to whether the, I'm the, sorry, commission's, the commission's lawyers are engaged in assisting with the conduct of the hearing, Mr yeah. Moses. What I don't wish to do is delay the hearing any further. Um, at we the moment, the hearing being delayed uh, either. at we the moment, the as far as I'm aware, the commission doesn't have any jurisdiction to make the orders, including the destruction orders that are contemplated in these short minutes, but I'm not going to shut the matter down, Mr Moses. I am prepared to say that when the Commission has appropriate time to do so, um, these matters will be given further consideration, um, if possible today, um, and if it may be that we might have to um, consider the matter, for example, during the luncheon adjournment um, when we, the witness um, can have a short break and we can take the matter further. No, thank you. But at this stage, I would like to proceed with Mr Maguire's evidence with a no, thank you. view well, we hope to finishing that evidence today. Well, we, thank you, Commissioner. There's just one issue I wanted to raise in respect of evidence yesterday. That is a question put by my learned friend because we've gone back to check the record in respect to this. Can I ask that you go to the transcript at page 1709, line 13? I'm referring to a public transcript or a pub private transcript, if you can just assist me. I think my learned friend would know that it's public. I would have told him if it's private. 1709. Yes, thank you. Just bear with me a moment. <clears throat> Do you have that, Mr Robertson? I don't immediately. I'm just bringing it up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Line 13. Yes. Do you have that, Commissioner? Yes. My learned friend put a proposition to the witness and can you assist in what you've explained in advance of the 5 September call that I've shown you as to what was the Badgerys Creek stuff? And then he puts this proposition. I mean, surely at least to the point of saying Ms Waterhouse or interests associated with her are interested in selling the property. Surely you communicated that. He said, I can't recall what I communicated with regards to Badgerys Creek. And then my friend says this, well, you've at least communicated something. Do you agree with that? 
I would agree with that, but I can't recall what specifics, or it might have been a broad discussion I can't recall. Mm -hmm. And then he says, presuming, this is my learned friend, you'd at least told her that Ms Waterhouse had some relevance to what you describe as the Badgerys Creek stuff. Perhaps yes. And then he said, well, perhaps, or yes, oh, I'm not sure, I'm just not sure. Now, my learned friend had no basis to put the question, presuming you at least told her, that Ms Waterhouse had some relevance to what you describe as the Badgers Creek stuff. We've been through the material. Ms. But Moses, maybe her. weren't you in court during this? I'm sorry? Weren't you in the hearing during this? I was. And we went back to check the materials that this commission has in respect of it. That's what we did. We've been trying. I think my learned friend made the quip that I've been unusually quiet during this inquiry. We've been trying to ensure on our instructions that this inquiry was the subject of being completed with minimum objection in respect to matters, even if they traversed matters that could in one way be unfair to our client. But we've gone back to check this and we can't remain silent on this. My learned friend had no basis to put that question. And all we're saying is a word of caution that in terms of the questions that he wants to craft today, that bearing in mind his obligations, that if you're going to put a proposition, there has to be a basis for it. This is not the way you do it. And there's no, let me finish. I'm Commissioner, I'm entitled. Commissioner, I'm entitled to be heard. I'm on my feet. Been heard. You've made that point Thank more you. than once, Mr. Moses. And, and I just want to be clear on this, if I can, Commissioner, that if my friend has a basis for it, then he should disclose it. Because this is another concern. I'm going to raise this right now because we went back yesterday. We were told for the first time about Mr. Maguire approaching the UWE issue that is with the parliamentary ethics advisor and approaching that ethics advisor before the issue is raised in a telephone call with Ms Berejiklian and told him about the job offer. Yet the way my friend put a question to the Premier last week, to Ms Berejiklian last week, was if somehow that was something unusual. Whereas he Mr. had in his, can I finish? Mr. Moses, I'm entitled are, to be heard. Mr Moses, these appear to be matters appropriate either for objection at the time these questions mm -hmm. were being asked or by way of submission. How could I object? when that document was not in my possession at the time my friend examined Ms Berejiklian. He, yesterday, let's be clear about this, this commission disclosed for the first time, it had in its possession Mr Maguire approaching the parliamentary ethics advisor and telling him about the UWE job offer. That was copy book correct. And he also told him about the assistance of work he'd been undertaking in respect to that entity. Now, my learned friend, did not disclose that, or this commission did not, until yesterday. So all I'm saying is, if matters are going to be put, they need to be put carefully and properly based on fact. Because at the end of the day, this commission is not a forum for a person's reputation to be the subject of question marks if there is no basis for it. Well, and that's, that, that, that is all I'm saying, yeah. because that is a serious issue that arose yesterday. That's all I wish to say, Commissioner. Do you wish to say something, Mr I Robertson? Do. Can I make two points? First, the document that my learned friend referred to, Exhibit 105, Volume 1, page 237, which con contains a note of the discussion with Mr Maguire with the Parliamentary Ethics Advisor, I tendered on the first day of the hearing. You never put before, my learned friend, before my learned friend makes what amounts to allegations of misconduct against yeah. me, he should, with great respect, be very careful yeah. in what he puts. That's the first yeah. point. The second point is it's not in my respectful submission of my learned friend to give, as it were, some sort of general warning or complaint of the kind that's just given. In my respectful submission, if an objection is to be taken to the question, it's quite appropriate that he makes the objection in the usual way by saying, I object or we object. The idea that there's some general forthcoming in futuro objection or warning in my respectful submission is not the appropriate way to proceed at all and I object to the way in which my learned friend sought to do it. Commissioner, I'd close to be heard on two points, if I can. First issue is this. The reason I raise it is so that I don't have to engage in objections during the course of the day to bear that in mind, because this was an issue that we went back to check last night. Well, you obviously, for, I, I accept what Mr Robertson says. If this document was tendered on the first day, you don't appear to have checked your facts very well. well no, no let me, I'm addressing you now on the Waterhouse issue first, Commissioner, in respect of that issue. We yes. went back and checked the issues in relation to that and there is nothing that will contradict what I've just told you. In respect of the first issue, I accept what my learned friend says, if, if the parliamentary ethics note was the subject of a tender on the first day. But the issue is, and this is the concern, that given the questioning of what occurred last Friday, 
where that issue was not the subject of being raised in respect of what was the questioning of Ms Berejiklian, one would have thought that that would have been a matter averted to in respect of when questions were being put about whether this person told her about the job offer. Mr Moses, that but that's all I wish to say. an extremely elliptical submission. I don't think it um, requires response at this Thank stage. You. I think we should proceed with Thank Mr Maguire's evidence. Thank you. Yes, Mr Robertson. Can I deal with some housekeeping matters first? First, I want to clarify some matters in particular in terms of timing as to what occurred yesterday. I identified them in summary towards the end of the public transcript yesterday, but I thought for the benefit of interested observers I should identify it so there's no misapprehension as to what occurred yesterday. Between about 10.05 a.m. I, I was examining Mr Maguire in public. I continued to do so until about 12.45 p.m. At that point in time, I indicated that there were certain matters that I wished to explore with Mr Maguire in private and then pursuant to a submission that I made, the public inquiry proceeded into private session. That private session continued until 1.13 p.m., I'm told, and an adjournment was then taken for lunch. I then submitted to you that the Commission should remain in private session to deal with a separate matter. In other words, nothing to do with the relationship between Ms. Mr Maguire and Ms Berejiklian in respect of which I indicated there was reasons as to why that matter should be dealt with in private rather than in public. A, that occurred at about 12.17pm. We start a little bit late after 12, lunch. 2.17pm, I'm so sorry. 2.17pm after lunch. An issue backwards arose in, in time. I'm so sorry? You were going backwards in time. I was going backwards in time. I apologise, Commissioner. An issue arose in that private examination at about 2.25pm, which led to the hearing to be adjourned briefly and some further brief evidence was taken after which a further longer adjournment took place at about 2.33 p.m. and then as is on the public record at 3.40 p.m. the public inquiry reconvened in public and I submitted that the public session of the public inquiry should be adjourned until 10 a.m. today. I thought it was appropriate that I underline that timing yeah. given that um, there has at least been some public speculation that there was a lengthy private hearing in relation to what I might describe as the relationship matter. That's not so. The matter that the Commission was dealing with in the afternoon was it was a different matter yeah. in respect of which some short evidence was taken, but there was an issue that there needed to be dealt with. I thought it was appropriate to deal with to uh, address that matter. I, I should also indicate that there was some suggestion, uh, as I apprehended, that uh, there was some other uh, what I might call security breach or privacy breach in relation to a second document over and above the one that you referred to, Commissioner, that was in relation to a telephone number. I'm instructed that the particular telephone number is, is disconnected and was not... I don't think this should be done on the record. I'll indicate, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it this way. There, was some, there, there has been some speculation of some additional issue in addition to the one that you've identified, Commissioner. Um, I've had inquiries taken in relation to that matter. I don't understand that to be an issue at all. Um, I won't take it any further in light of my, my learned friend seeking to intervene in relation to that. Very well. In terms of the programming, I'll continue with Mr Maguire today. I'm going to do my best to finish with Mr Maguire today. That may mean that uh, some shorter breaks will need to be taken yes. and matters of that kind. Mr Maguire, yesterday in private session we got up to about the, sorry, in public session we got up to about the 5th of September 2017 mm -hmm. and you recall that I played you a telephone intercept where you had a communication with Ms Berejiklian which had a reference to the phrase Badgeries Creek stuff. Do you, do you remember that? Uh, vaguely, yes. And so I'm, I'm now going to show you from the, the 6th of September 2017, if you can go to exhibit 326 please. Just to help you with the with the context, and I think you agreed yesterday that as at the fifth of September, twenty seventeen, you thought that the deal in relation to the Smart West site uh, was likely to get over the line. Is that right? In other words, likely to be agreed. Um, it, it was indicated, yes. And, and you remember that one of the things that you said on the telephone intercept was. I'll be glad. I'll be glad when that's done because I'll make enough money to pay yes. off my debts, which will be good. That. Remember that. I recall. And so I'm now going to show you the sixth of September, 2017, 4:43 p.m. 
message from you to Ms Berejiklian, Exhibit 326. Plus I have money in the bank as well, so I'm almost at target and still got 25k for next election. Now, pausing there just in the reference to the next election, do we take it that it was still a possibility as at September of 2017 that you might stand at the next election? The, the, the money that's being referred to there, and to answer your question, um, is a requirement to raise uh, by each member of parliament an amount to fund the next election. Uh, whether or not you're the candidate. Whether or not you're the candidate. Um, and uh, I wanted to put in place the funds to meet the target. Uh, that's what that message is about, to the best of my recollection. And this was something you sought to explain yesterday, that one of the requirements of members of parliament is to, as it were, try and reach a target of fundraising for the next election. All right? members are required to contribute um, uh, to the election, some more than others. Um, it's, you, it's, it's, it's set by the party. It's an internal thing. And then when you say uh, in this message, almost at target, that's the particular target you're referring to, is it right? Yes. And you then say, also good news, we clinched the land deal. Do you see that there? Yes. Was that a reference to the Smart West land deal, noting that it's happening this, the day after the call that I played yesterday? I don't know. I, I don't recall what that um, was referring to. But you then say, for my friends, and there's two emojis, I should be back in the black soon. Do you see that there? Yes. And so do you recall whether that is associated with what we heard on the previous day, the call regarding the Badgeries Creek stuff, or no, you can't I, recall one way or no, the other? No, I don't yet. recall one way or the other. Now, I'm now going to play you Exhibit 3 to... Yes, of course. Um, Mr Maguire, the only thing, as I understand, that would have put you back in the black was receiving an amount of about $1.5 million. Yes. So at that stage, the only prospect of that, I take it, was um, the deal, the sale at the Badgery Creek proceeding. A success somewhere, I'd suggest, but uh, that didn't happen. Well, I understand that, but did you have any other potential source of one and a half million dollars than this no. Badgeries Creek deal? No, Commissioner, I, I wouldn't have. So, on the face of that, you'd have to agree, wouldn't you, that the reference to the land deal, at least in your mind, must have been a reference to the Smart West deal? Um, I can't be sure that it was Smart West. I can't be sure about that from that. Um, Brief message. I really can't be sure. But it's an available inference, is it not? Uh, yes, it is. Object. Yes, Mr. Robertson. I, I'm now going to play Exhibit 327, 7th of September 2017. So the next day after this message, call number 1466, and I'll play you an excerpt of that call. Okay, that sounds fun. Yeah, I've been doing my books, my account. Yep. Counting, okay. counting my tax refund. <laughs> Good. That's excellent. Given the size of it, it'll take you all week to count it all. It's true. And the good news is William, William tells me we've done our deal. So hopefully that's about half of all that gone now. That's good. Mm. I don't need to know about that bit. No, you don't. Yeah. You do not. So anyway, it's all good news. So we're moving ahead. Okay, good. Who's William? Oh, it'd be William Lung. Did you explain to Ms Birajiklian before this call of the 7th of September 2017 who William was? Um, I don't recall. Was it possible that you did? I couldn't be sure. I, I, I don't recall. I couldn't be sure. Well, because you're not saying you know, William Leong, who happens to be this particular individual, you're just using the first name William. Do you see that there? Yes, I see that. So you're able to assist on the question I asked. In other words, whether this was the first time, so far as you can recall, you're referring to William, or I, whether you've drawn that to Ms. Berejiklian's attention at some prior stage. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm not clear. I can't recall. But later in the call, you have an exchange. You'll see from toward the bottom of the page, Ms. Berejiklian says, I don't need to know about that bit. Do you see that there? I see that. And you say in response, no, you don't. Mm -hmm. You do not. Do you see that there? Yes. 
Why did you say no, you don't, you do not? Just a response. I... I don't know why I said that. Well, it can't just be a, a random response. Wasn't it the case that there was particular information that you decided not to tell Ms Berejiklian? Um, Let me perhaps put it this way. What, it's, what it seems to, at least to my ears, is you're agreeing to Ms Berejiklian that there's a particular class of information. Take that off the screen. Particular information that you you don't propose to share with her. Is that right? Yes. I mean, you gave some general answers yesterday regarding the kinds of information that you might sh might share with Ms. Berejiklian. At least as I hear that call, and I may have it wrong, there was a line at which you came to the view that you shouldn't share information concerning your business dealings, perhaps generally, or perhaps with property developers more specifically. Is that a, a fair way of understanding the communications? Yes, I think so. Were you concerned that if you shared a little bit more information than what you did with her, that she might need to take action in the exercise of her public functions? Um, well, yes, I would have been concerned that that um, that uh, it would cause an issue for it, yes. I mean, you were at least concerned at this point in time, weren't you, about questions that might be raised as to the propriety of your involvement in the Badgeries Creek matter. Would you agree? Um, well, yes. And do you agree that at least in part you sought to shield some of that information from Ms Berejiklian? Yes. You shared some, at least in general terms, as to what you're up to and what you're doing, correct? Yes. She was at least to some extent a, a sounding board or someone with whom you might discuss the kinds of things that you're involved in, in, at least in general terms, is that right? Y yes. But it looks like at least, and I'm raising this for your comment, Yes. that there was, a, there was a line at which you wouldn't fix her with knowledge in relation to your activities. Is, is that right or is that going that's too correct. far? No, I, I, I think that's a correct. And is that, how we, is that how we understand a comment like the one that we heard a moment ago, no, you don't, you do not? Is that how we should understand mm. that? Mm. Was it also a case that as you understood it, either from this call or from any other communication you had with Ms Berejiklian, that there was particular bits of information that she didn't want to know about your activities? Uh, well, yes. And, and where, where is the line drawn, at least in your mind, as to what you would share in relation to your what I'll call outside business activities and what you'd not share. It sounds like there's a line. I'm just wanting your assistance as to where that line is. I think the line is just general discussion, general overview, and that was about it. Um, well, it was disclosed. a little bit more than that, wasn't it? Because, for example, on the 5th of September 2017 call that I showed you or that I played you yesterday, there was some discussion of money in the sense that you said there was enough enough money to pay off my debts, which would be good. Do you remember that? Yes, that's correct. And I think you accepted yesterday that you had told Ms Berejiklian that your debts were something like $1.5 million, correct? Yes, that's correct. So the line's not drawn, I don't think, but obviously tell me if you disagree, between money matters and non-money matters. There must be some other line that you were drawing, at least in your mind, as to what to share and what not to share. Do you agree? Can you ask that question again, please? What I'm trying to understand is, that, at least as I understand your evidence so far, there was some information that you would share with Ms Berejiklian regarding what I might describe as your outside business interests, but some information that you might decide not to. Yes. Have I got that right? Yes, got that right. And in relation to the information that you decided not to, it was because you were concerned, or at least a factor was you were concerned that that might cause her to take steps in the exercise of her public duties, correct? Um, yes. And what I'm trying to understand is the line between those two categories of information. It sounds like at least general matters, what I'm up to in general terms, the kinds of 
business deals and the like I'm seeking to be involved in was discussed, mm -hmm. et cetera? Yes. General discussion, just general discussion. At least some discussion of matters of money took place, is that right? Yes. In fact, you were in regular communications, either talking about money or sometimes complaining about money, is that right? Yes, that's correct. But would you agree that there was a point at which you stopped giving the details because you were concerned that that might cause her to have to take steps in relation to that matter? Well, I, I, I thought it would cause her difficulties. Um, so I, I uh, limited the information that I gave her, yes. So putting it in a slightly different way, it's not necessarily a blow-by-blow -blow account of your business activities but it's at least some general discussions and sometimes some discussions of matters of finance. Is that right? Mm, yes. What difficulties do you think it would have caused her if you'd descended to specifics, Mr Maguire? Well, I think it might put her in a really difficult position um, if I went into specifics of, um, of issues and all sorts of, uh, you know, complexities that might be involved. Uh, I didn't think she needed to know. Um, and the conversations I had, Commissioner, were, you know, of a broad nature, uh, and I regularly refrain from um, giving too much detail because a lot of it was hypothetical too. No, but I don't think you've answered my question. My question was what difficulties did you see it causing Ms Berejikli and if you descended to specifics? Oh, well, obviously there's, there's, there's conflict of interest and all of that kind of stuff that I considered might... Um, make things really difficult for her. So I Well, in relation to Smart West, for example, I take it the um, New South Wales government was making decisions almost constantly about um, how that project would be brought to fruition. Uh, yes, there would have been. So that would be an obvious conflict of interest. Yes. You'd agree, though, wouldn't you, that there was at least some discussion as to the kinds of steps that you were taking to achieve <coughs> benefits for people like Ms Waterhouse such as letting her know things like, I've taken her up to your office uh, and I'm trying to get them to help with problems that Ms Louise might have, that kind of thing. I don't know that I would have been that direct or um, given that much information. Well, do you agree that you at least gave information on, of that kind? In other words, identifying particular kinds of steps that you've taken or that you're going to take as between you and public officials? during the course of discussions with Ms. Berejikli? No, I, I can't recall that I would have been that detailed in, in what was happening, no. To my best recollection, no. Can I assist you this way? I'm going to jump a little bit further in the timeline. Intercept 2909, Exhibit 328. These previous um, documents have all been tendered, I assume. They have. I've uh, been at least intending to identify the exhibit number as I go. Okay. The 6th September 2017 SMS was exhibit 326 and the call 1466 was exhibit 327. Thank you. Was and is, I should say. Now we're going to play 18 October 2017, intercept 2909. Exhibit 328. So I told her what was happening. She said, oh, now I understand. Um, and then, um, so then, uh, then I had a little bit of coffee with Louise Waterhouse. Oh, yeah, how's she going? Yeah, good. She's got a big problem. So I took her up to your office and said, here, can you help solve this? She's got a lot of property out of Badgerys Creek. And yeah. the planning department... Right, and, and RMS and all of them are saying, look, you know, we, we don't want to plan that now. We're too busy worrying about, you know, the new housing and all this around Badgers Creek. And she's saying, but, you know, I need a road. I need an access. Give me an access. I'll develop it myself. I don't need you. Right? Yeah. And they're resisting. She said, I've been two years trying to get this road on. She said, and they just won't do anything. And I said, okay. So I got roads. I got Jock to come down. And I got um, one bloke from your place there, got them put their heads together and said, look, why can't you fix this? It, they need to extend the, the, the thing 300 metres, right? And and there's no change in it you know, for 300 metres and she can get on with the job. Honestly, I just, you know, nobody wants to do anything. So, Mr McGuire, we'll come back to the detail of that. 
in a little while, but does that at least refresh your recollection? Yes. That you didn't draw the line at explaining the kinds of steps that you were taking vis-a-vis -vis public officials, in this case, the Premier's office. Mm. You did that on at least one occasion, as we heard from that. Do you yes. agree? Yes, yes. But it's at least the case that there was some level of detail that you decided not to share with Ms Berejiklian with the view of not putting her in the difficult position that you sought to identify yes. before, is that right? I believe so. Yes. And the particular difficult position is, as you saw it at least, was the risk of, I think this is your phrase, her being put in some sort of position of conflict in relation to matters that might, for example, be before government? Yes. Just in relation to the Waterhouse issue generally, to your knowledge, did any of the steps that you took in relation to the Waterhouse matter actually lead to a change in government policy rules or anything of that kind? No. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, None Commissioner. of what you're aware, is that is that right? I, I'm not aware. I don't know. Is it right to say that you sought to achieve changes in government policy for the assistance of Ms Waterhouse, but so far as you're aware, that was not successful? Uh, Miss Waterhouse and the 30 or 40 residents, yes, that's correct. But so far as you're aware, at least those attempts were not successful, is it right? I, I don't know what happened. Now, I'm going to go back in time to September where we were before. I just went forward to that to assist with your recollection on a previous question that I asked. But do you recall whether there was a point in time at which you were concerned as to whether the proposed sale of the Smart West site might fall over, by which I mean might not be successful, Country Garden might no longer be interested, but instead sought to identify other potential purchasers or investors for that site? Uh, I have a recollection it was an issue, but not a clear recollection. Do you recall whether you took any particular steps in relation to that matter? Um. I, I recall I may have made some inquiries with uh, some of the consulates about um, whether there was potential to take part in a partnership. I, I recall that. Now, is it right to say that the only reason you had that sort of direct access to consulates was in your capacity as Chair of the New South Wales Parliament Asia Pacific Friendship Group? Well, yes. And is it consistent with your recollection that you reached out to that network with a view to identifying potential purchasers or investors in relation to the Smart West or, land? Or partners in the project, yes. Or potentially partners in the sense of investors who might work together with Ms. Waterhouse. Uh, with either Ms Waterhouse or perhaps with some other investors as well. Yes. Right? Did you inform these consular officials that at least one of the reasons you were making contact with them was the hope that you might receive a profit yourself. No. Due course. Do you at least agree, though, that you had an expectation or at least a hope that in the event that the Smart West land was sold or was the subject of an investment, that you would receive a commission or other payment from someone, be that Mr Leong or from someone else? Well, I hope, yeah. And in fact, that was the principal reason that you were engaged in some of the activities that we've seen so far, mm. the hope that you would ultimately receive some profits in relation to that matter. Is that yes. Right? Part of what you were seeking to do at that particular time in your life is set yourself up financially for your post-parliamentary life. To have right? a future to go to, yes. Have a future to go to, both in terms of a job going forward or and, mm. and, and in terms of having sufficient... Uh, financial resources. Mm, right? to, to have a future, yes. But would you agree that in each of the steps that you took in relation to the Smart West matter, you never disclosed to the people that you were dealing with, be they public officials in New South Wales, mm. consular officials on behalf of other countries, or indeed anyone else, that one of the reasons you were doing this, I think you accepted the principal reason you were doing this, is it was with the hope of receiving a commission or other fee for yourself? I agree. Did, did you ever tell these individuals? No. Did Ms Waterhouse make it clear to you that in the event that you were successful in assisting in her obtaining investors for the site mm. or perhaps purchases 
for the site other than Mr. Leong, that she would look after you no. financially? No, never. So no, never. certainly no written agreement? No that agreement, kind? no suggestion whatsoever, never, ever. But it was still at least in your mind a hope or desire that that's what would happen in the event that you managed to assist in the sale of the sale or investment of the land, is that right? A hope, yes. A hope that you take some steps, you assist in an investment being made or a sale being made, mm. and at the end of the day, Ms Waterhouse or perhaps someone else would pay a commission or other fee to at, you. At some point, right? yes. And so you had the fairly clear understanding with Mr Leong that if Mr Leong was able to sell the, the Waterhouse land, the Smart West land to country garden that you would receive a commission or other fee from Mr Leong? You indicated that, yes. And that would come out of Mr Leong's fee that Ms Waterhouse and her interests agreed to yes. pay, is that right? I agree, yes. But are you saying that vis-a-vis -vis Ms Waterhouse yourself, you had a hope and a desire, but not necessarily as clear an understanding of the kind that you had with Mr I, I never had an understanding with Miss Waterhouse. Never ever did we have an agreement, a discussion. Never did she um, even suggest uh, that that was an outcome. Never well, not, ever. Not to you, but not to me. No. Mr. Luong recounted a conversation he said he had had with her that she asked him who would look after you. That, that's that's right. He did say that, and he he told me that, but um, she never approached me and and made that um, uh, those comments or. Um, proposition. I understand that, but in relation to um, that conversation you'd had with Mr. Luong, mm. surely that gave you comfort that even if it wasn't a transaction Mr. Luong affected, but uh, with a, yet another a third party not yet identified, that she would hope for the same outcome for you in that respect too. Yes. I'm going to play now a call of the 14th of September 2017 which relates to the question I was asking you before about consular networks. It's 1765, not presently in evidence. We'll ask for that to be played. It's a call with Takawaka-san, who is a Japanese consul, or was a Japanese consul at that point in time, is that right? A very nice man, yes. Yes, Dr. Wakasan. Yeah, good evening. Good, yeah, good evening. How yes. are you? I hope I'm not yeah. disturbing you. Yeah, no, no, it's all right. Sir. Good. Tell me it's a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. good. Sorry, it's been yeah. so hard to talk. Just, um, yeah. friend, uh -huh. in the conversation that we had at dinner uh -huh. a couple uh -huh. of nights yes. ago, you yes. mentioned mm -hmm. that uh, Badger's Creek Airport, there were companies that were very interested in making some investments. Um, not exactly, but then you know, I would say that there was there is some not very, but then there is some potential. I mean, potential. Yes, I yes. mean, candidate. But they were. I mean, yes. but they you know, were. Mm -hmm. They were major but, companies, correct? Yeah, it's a major com big okay. company. So I've yeah. been, I've been asked by a friend of mine to uh, mm -hmm. do some matchmaking, and mm -hmm. and and uh, they've got a very large holding that mm -hmm. uh, has potential for a technology park mm -hmm. uh, as mm -hmm. well as uh, service industry for the new airport. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Quite a yep. few hundred acres, a very mm -hmm. big plot mm -hmm. of land, and mm -hmm. access to highways, all of those things. Uh, so mm -hmm. they are seeking a partner mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, either to partner or to sell. So, mm -hmm. so um, they've, got, they've got the land, they own the land, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, they're ready to move. So mm -hmm. um, we mm -hmm. need to find. And I said, well, um, I mm -hmm. went and spoke, uh, you know, I had dinner at the consul and they mm -hmm. suggested that, you know, mm -hmm. Japan's interested. I said, mm -hmm. I would ring and ask mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. might like to try and uh, mm -hmm. find one or two mm -hmm. of the best potential mm -hmm. um, partners mm -hmm. and or buyers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, well, at least we, at least we can try. At least you know, mm. of course, you know, I cannot guarantee the success. Oh, of course, not. Uh, I wouldn't at least we can. That. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I wouldn't mm -hmm. expect that. Oh, but but mm. the, but this friend who who has mm. the land uh, is mm -hmm. very keen. And when I said, mm -hmm. well, Japanese expressed an interest um, mm -hmm. after the premier's visit, 
they mm-hmm. they um, mm-hmm. their eyes lit up mm-hmm. and they said, "Ah, Japanese, good to do business with." Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. So, what shall I do? I mean, uh, well, I, well, I, I, th- I think you've got to get your commercial people um, mm-hmm. to find um, the mm-hmm. companies that are expressing interest in mm-hmm. in the mm-hmm. infrastructure network. And mm-hmm, then mm-hmm. Um, you let me know, and I'll put them all mm-hmm. together. <clears throat> yep. mm-hmm. All right, all right. That's okay. all we need to do. You need to do it rather quickly. Um, mm-hmm, I'll mm-hmm. tell you for why. Um, mm-hmm. The Chinese are moving all over the place, and, yeah. and yeah. people are getting concerned that they've got too much influence. Yep. Number one, number yep. two, <laughs> that this important infrastructure is around the airport, yeah. Yeah. and yep. that right. um, that uh, they, mm-hmm. I think, have a preference for mm-hmm. some of our closer mm-hmm. friends mm-hmm. who we know yeah. we can rely on. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. telling you? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah perfect, perfectly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so, you know, someone mm-hmm. from South Korea, a South Korean company mm-hmm. or a Japanese mm-hmm. company mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. is reliable, trustworthy, mm-hmm. good to do business mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. and in mm-hmm. times of trouble, we can depend on you. Yeah. And vice versa. Mm-hmm. 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 But okay, I mean, but you know, you, what you, when you are talking about the airport, it's, it is the, the airport itself, or I mean, you know, it's the land, some, it's the know, ramp, supporting, land supporting. Mm-hmm. It's the land that supports the airport. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's mm-hmm. surrounding the airport, and uh-huh. and there's uh-huh. hundreds of hectares. Uh huh. Uh huh. And it I means see. long term, it'll all be developed into yeah. into yeah. service areas. It'll be developed yeah. into. Um, yeah. Aircraft, uh-huh. uh, freight, logistics, uh-huh. all mm-hmm. of those things. Mm-hmm. 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 All right, all right. So, so it is a construction of airport itself rather than supporting facilities. Shall I say? Well, well, not constructing the airport itself. It's constructing mm-hmm. the support network for the airport. Okay. okay. So the buildings that are around the airport, the warehouses, mm-hmm. the freight hubs, mm-hmm. all of those mm-hmm. things. There's a the potential mm-hmm. for all of that. Plus, yeah, there's the potential good. for housing and development mm. as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. All right. All right. So I can well, I can get mm-hmm. you briefed if you like. I can mm-hmm. have someone yeah. come and brief uh, you and sure. your your people. Sure. You just need to let me know. Yeah. Mm. Sure. Sure. Okay. Maybe I, I I might need some briefing. I mean, so that I can I can you know better explain. To yeah. The Japanese. Okay. It mm. depends. You know, Japanese companies are in, in general very. Compartmentalize. Yes. I mean, yeah, we need to. I mean, push the right button. I mean, Correct. is it about? Uh, I mean, is it about the construction or is it about the housing or is it uh, I mean, about the finance or you know or is it about uh, let's say I mean you know details. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Dep- yeah. So you we need, need a to briefing. Right mm. Yeah. That's right. That's can you right. can you just send me a message when yep. you're free for a briefing? Yeah. Where the yeah. windows when, are. And yeah, and I, I'm available. Yeah. 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 And I will, mm-hmm. I will have someone come and meet you and have yeah, you yeah. fully briefed. And yeah. you might even bring one of your consuls as well mm-hmm. that yeah. deals mm-hmm. in this. And then if you can yeah. locate the partner, yeah. away we go. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mr. McGuire, do you agree that the call you just heard provides an example of you using the consular network to which you had access as chair of the Parliamentary Friendship Group with a view to pursuing your own private business interests? Yes. Who was Mr. Takawana? He was the consul for Japan. In Sydney? Sydney, yes. Someone who you had met in your capacity as chair of the Parliamentary Friendship Group, is that right? Yes. In fact, in that role, it's very common to have meetings, lunches, dinners, etc., with consular officials, is that right? Yes, there's a regular round of of dinners and functions. And so is it right that you took (coughs) an opportunity in that connection, in other words, in connection with having dealings with the consular network, to raise this issue of potential <coughs> Japanese investors in relation yes. to the to a particular piece of land, correct? Yes, correct. There's a reference in the call to a friend of mine who was a friend of yours. Uh, it would be Miss Waterhouse or um, Mr Leong. I can't recall which one I was referring to. And I take it you didn't inform Mr Takawaka-san that you had at least a hope that in the event that the a Japanese investor might invest in the SmartWest site that you might end up with a... Fee. No. There's a reference in the call to Chinese interests having too much influence. Do you remember yes. hearing that? Mm. Did you have the authorization of anyone within government to complain to a consular official, in this case from Japan, regarding 
China having or not having too much influence in Australia? No. At least notionally, you were calling this consular official from Japan in your capacity as chair of the Asia-Pacific Friendship Group, correct? Yes, and a friend. Well, you at least agree, wouldn't you, that it was quite wrong for you in circumstances where you didn't make it clear to Mr Takawaka that you were at least motivated, at least in part by personal profit interests, to be saying something about the relationship between Australia or perhaps New South Wales and China without disclosing that at least one of the reasons that you're identifying that point is with a view to making money for yourself. Yes, I'd agree. You'd agree, wouldn't you, that you wouldn't have engaged in a call of the kind that we've just heard with Mr Takawaka or indeed any other consular official, but for your hope that you would successfully assist Ms Waterhouse in a sale or investment and then would receive a fee yourself, yes, correct? Yes, correct. Now, did you ultimately make any arrangements for Takawaka-san to meet with anyone in relation to the Smart West site? I don't recall. Let me help this way. Do you want to yeah. tender that last? I, 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 Sorry, I, were you going to say something, Mr McGuire? I, I, I don't recall what actually happened. I'll, I'll assist you. I'll show you some documents that might assist, assist you. you. I'll next bring up intercept 2063, which is an SMS. And while that's coming up, I tender intercept 1765, a call between Mr Maguire and Mr Takawaka, T-A-K-A-W-A-K-A, -A -A -A, 14 September 2017. Exhibit 367. <clears throat> is it, it's just Mr Takawana, isn't it? Yes. The san, Taka is it Taka some sort of expression of an honorific, adding san? San, uh, Mr. It's oh, son means son, Mr. Doesn't yes. It? Thank you, Mr. Uh, here is a message from uh, ah. Takawaka-san to you. You see there, good yes. morning, Mr. Leong visited us yesterday. His briefing was very interesting. You see that there? Yes, I see that. So does that does that refresh your memory that you broke at a meeting between yes. Mr. Takawaka and Mr. Leong to yes. discuss the smart website? Yes. yes. Now, did that brokerage end up in any investment so far as you know, so far as you recall? I, I, I don't know. I, I have no idea. Well, was this a genuine interest that you were raising with Mr Takawaka or was this a attempt to try and put pressure on, commercial pressure on Country Garden to decide whether or not they wanted to be the purchaser of the site? No, I, in my mind it was a general attempt to get... Um, uh, technology companies, as you know, Japanese uh, and Koreans are some of the best uh, involved. Uh, that was the um, general uh, idea of this, of that uh, area, the technology park. So it, it wasn't just for one uh, specific country. The idea was to get technology from a number of them, and, and the Japanese was just one. But around about that point in time, you're at least hopeful that the deal between Country Garden Australia and the Waterhouse interests would be successful, correct? Yes. And that you would receive a very substantial payment in the event that it was successful, correct? Yes. But are you saying you're in effect putting a few irons in the fire in the hope that if that deal didn't come off, there might be some other form of investment that might take My place? My understanding is there were several compartments in the way that uh, this um, plan or this dream of Mr Waterhouse as Mr Bill Waterhouse uh, would would develop. There were certain industries in in space and aerotechnology that they want to create a hub. There was accommodation, uh, there was um, uh, industrial area to service um, um, the airport with technologies as well. So it was um, it was compartments within a plan from my recollection. Now, do you recall what what the next step you took, if any, in relation to what we've been describing as the Smart West plan? No, I don't recall. Well, I played you a bit out of order a call from the 18th of October 2017 between you and Ms Berejiklian, where you referred to the fact that you'd taken Ms Waterhouse to the Premier's office to ask them to help solve her problem. Do you remember yes. hearing that on the... Yes, I recall that. Did you in fact? Did you in fact do that? Did you in fact take Ms. Water up, Waterhouse up to the Premier's office? Do you remember? 
I can't recall it, but if I've said it, I, I must have done it. Well, do you have any recollection of specifically doing it? No, I don't have a recollection of specifically doing it. Let me try and help you this way. We'll go to Exhibit 258. And I'm going to show you some messages between you and Ms Waterhouse that appear to be setting up a time for Ms Waterhouse to be attending upon you in Parliament House, just mm -hmm. to see if that assists in your recollection. And also in terms of timing, it might assist as well. We'll start there. Ms Waterhouse is requesting a meeting for you, meeting with you. Do you have time for coffee sometime? See that there? Yes. So this is the 16th of October 2017. Mm -hmm. Just turn the page. And g'day this week. I'm very flexible. Just give me a heads up. See that there? Yes. Next one. Thank you, Daryl. I'm coming to town tomorrow and subject to a final confirmation. Could meet early afternoon. Would that suit? See that there? Yes. Next time after uh, next page. After QT, say, 3.30, so that there? Yes. Take it QT is a reference to question time? Correct. And so I take it we infer from this that you're talking about a parliamentary sitting week? Yes. And then uh, next page quickly. Would 3.45 also work? Next page. Very good to see you then. Yes. Etc. Does that assist your recollection as to whether there was a meeting between you and Ms Waterhouse in Parliament House on or perhaps about the 17th of October 2017? I can't recall the meeting, but um, obviously the text is there, but I can't recall the meeting where we had coffee or the detail to that. There was a reference in the call that I played you a little bit earlier out of time, the one from the 18th of October 2017, so two days after these messages, yes. uh, referring to someone by the name of Jock. Uh, Remember hearing that? Yes. Who's Jock? Uh, he worked as an advisor to the Minister for Roads. And what did Jock have to do with what you explained to Ms Berejiklian was something that you were doing to try and help Ms Waterhouse to solve her problem? Uh, that was the exit issue off the, uh, the newly designed or proposed road. Uh, the one we referred to where there was an access issue for Miss Waterhouse land and also the 30 or 40 residents that live there. So the question of access between the Smart West land, land around it to what will be, to, to the Northern Road. And the landholders, right? yes. And what, what did Jock have to do with that matter? Um, If you want me to replay that call, I, I, yes, but I, just, I just can't recall. You. I can't recall what he what he did directly with it, um, or how it eventuated from there. Or did you set up any meetings with Jock, or what was Jock's role as you um, call it? I can't recall what actually happened with regard to that, but I know that there was uh, a meeting or a number of meetings. Um, but I can't remember exactly how the steps took place. But yes, there was definitely some kind of meeting. And can you recall the circumstances in which that meeting came about? Not clearly, no, not clear in my <laughs> mind. Do you recall whether that meeting occurred on the 17th of October 2017, which seems to be the date that Ms Waterhouse and you are seeking to set up a meeting in Parliament House? Uh, I can't recall if, if um, Jock attended the meeting on that day, the one I had with Miss Waterhouse. I can't recall that. Let me try and assist you this way. Can we go please to volume 16, starting at page 42, just to see whether this helps jog your memory. Show you some photographs taken on the 17th of October 2017 mm -hmm. and note the time of 3.45, which seems to be the time that you arranged to meet Ms Waterhouse according to the text messages that we saw as part of Exhibit 253. Uh -huh. And then just go to the next page. Under her arm, she's got a, got a large folder. Do you see that there? Yes, I see that. We'll go to the next one. We'll go to the next one. Now, what we see on the screen, that's the desk that you sign in yes. at 
in the event that you want to see, for example, a member of parliament, is that right? One of the desks, yes. And so if you go to that desk and say, I'm here to see Mr Maguire, yes. right? they'd call you up and say, uh, someone's here to see you. Correct. But it's you as the member of parliament who decides whether to give them access or not to the, what I might call the secure area of parliament yes, house. Yes, correct. And if we then go to the next page, see someone who appears to look like you. Yes. And then the next page... You and Ms Waterhouse together. See that there? Yes, I see it. Now, does that help your recollection as to <coughs> a meeting with Ms Waterhouse on the 17th of October 2017? Well, the recollection of the meeting isn't clear, but it does remind me that I did meet her and uh, on that day, yes. And I take it you were me meeting her to discuss the Smart West matter, is that uh, right? Yes. And what other steps can you recall taking on that day, noting that I played you the call of the 18th of October 2017, mm. where you told Ms Vera Jicklin, at least, that you had taken Ms Waterhouse to the Premier's office and asked them to help with help her solve her problem with the planning department? I uh, honestly can't recall it. I, I just can't recall the steps that were taken. Do you have a recollection of taking Ms Waterhouse to the Premier's office and asking them to help her help solve her problem with the planning department at RS? I don't have a re recollection of it. No recollection, of, recollection at all at any time? I can't recall it. Not the kind of thing you would have made up, though, in communications with Ms Vera Duclin, is that right, or not? Well, I, I wouldn't have made it up, but the, the question is, I can't recall whether we went to that office or whether someone came to my office. I just don't, I just don't recall it. At least recall having a meeting at some time that you set up between Ms Waterhouse and Mr Souter. Yes, I do recall um, a meeting occurring. I, I don't know when, but I do recall a meeting occurring. Where where did that meeting take place, um, do you remember? Perhaps my office. I, I'd only be guessing. How did that meeting come about, do you remember? Um I can't for the life of me think how it came about, but I, if you want me to speculate, I, I would have organised it. Well, in terms of if you wanted to have access to a parliamentary liaison officer, as Mr Souter was at that time, yes. to a minister, what would the ordinary course be for you to make direct contact with the, what I'll call the PLO, or would you do it through the minister, or is there no general practice in no, relation to no. that? No, each minister has a PLO, and um, they're all identified. And their um, job is to liaise with the member. If you raise an issue with them, they then take management of it, control of it, and uh, um, assist if possible. But the particular meeting with Mr Souter that you can recall, do you recall whether that was organised directly with Mr Souter or whether it was organised through the minister or organised in some other fashion? I can't recall how I organised that uh, particular meeting whether it was with Mr Souter or through the Minister, I can't for the life of me think. In relation to the meeting itself, as best you can recall, what, what took place during the course of that meeting? Oh. I don't know. Um, it would have been a discussion uh, about uh, Miss Waterhouse's issue, I suspect, but I can't be clear on the detail of that meeting. Do you at least agree that during the course of that meeting you were uh, making representations on behalf of Miss Waterhouse? In other words, you're supporting the position that she was seeking to identify. I don't know that I took part um, in the detail of the meeting, but I certainly made the introduction um, and perhaps gave a brief of what the issue was. Um, Did you disclose that you hoped that in the event that the SmartWest site was developed, that you might end up with a personal fee for yourself? No. Why not? Um, it didn't cross my mind. It must have crossed your mind, mustn't it, to draw attention to the fact that someone like Mr Souter might have thought that you were just doing it in the exercise of a public function, whereas at least in part you're seeking to make money for yourself. Well, in hindsight I should have, but it, it just didn't cross my mind. But except in hindsight that's something that you should have at the very least disclosed, correct? Yes, I should have. Are you saying you didn't appreciate that at the time? No, I, it just didn't cross my mind at the time. What else, if anything, can you recall about the meeting with Mr Souter? The details of that are scant in my mind. I, I don't know. 
Mr. Souter suggests that the meeting may have taken place in one of the foyer areas of the Premier's office in Parliament House. Do you have any comment to make regarding that? I don't know. That? You're not, you don't have a recollection one way or the other? No. Ms. Waterhouse, I think I should indicate in fairness to you that may not that she was in that foyer area or one of the foyer areas at, at some point, but the meeting may have taken place in a different room, perhaps somewhere near that foyer area. Does that does that help you at all? It still doesn't help me. Have you used the foyer area of the Premier's office in Parliament House as a as it were impromptu meeting space before? Do you remember? Um, gee. I mean, people come and go all the time and you, you have a chat, you meet with groups that want to, um, uh, or delegations, etc. cetera. Um, I couldn't say that I had meetings there, but you, you certainly met people um, if they were um, coming to see the Premier or see someone about a particular issue. You agree, you agree I take it, that, but for the profit motive that you had, the hope that there'd be a fee for you in the event that investments were ultimately successful or developments were ultimately successful in the Smart West land, you wouldn't have bothered or taken the time to set up a meeting with Mr Souter. Do you agree? Uh, well, I can't fully agree because uh, there was also the issue that I raised um, with you about the landholders that Ms Waterhouse was also representing um, with regard, I think there was 30 or 40 of them that were landlocked under the the flight path. But as the member for Wagga Wagga, why did you care about that? Why were you spending your time dealing with that matter? Well, I, I regarded that as a political issue uh, for the for the um, the area, the local member, and um, Miss Waterhouse, Miss Waterhouse had spearheaded, along with a number of others, a, a committee that that were um, concerned that they were going to be landlocked uh, for twenty or thirty years underneath. Uh, the flight path and no way to get out. Uh, so that was another issue that um, weighed heavily on my mind. That, that might have been a factor, but you wouldn't have gone to the effort of setting up a meeting of the kind that you and I are just discussing, but for the fact that you had that profit motive in your mind as well, would you agree? Um, not totally. Um, you know, Miss Water, Waterhouse asked for help. She was part of a group of people that had troubles. I would have taken steps. I just wouldn't have ignored it. And I did take steps. But really what I'm suggesting is that you've taken so many steps in relation to the Smart West issue that it can't be explained by a general concern about landowners and political issues and things like that. Mm. It can only be explained by the fact that you were hoping for some financial return at the end of the day. Is that right? Yes. I tend to series of surveillance photographs, 17 October 2017, pages 42 through to 49, volume 16, public inquiry brief. Exhibit 368. Is that a time, convenient time to take um, yes, a short adjournment? We'll just take um, a 15 minute adjournment, Mr McGuire.
this, Mr. Robertson? I'm just going to play you another telephone intercept, which I hope will assist you with your recollection on the issue that we were discussing just before the adjournment, Yes. which includes steps that you took in relation to Mr. Souter and perhaps others in relation to Ms. Waterhouse. Intercept 3434, Exhibit 229, and it's a telephone intercept between you and Mr. Leong uh -huh. on the 18th of October 2017. So just to help you with your bearings, the intercept... So we draw that. The surveillance photographs that I showed you were the 17th of October 2017. Yes. The next day was the telephone call that I played between you and Ms. Berejiklian, where you referred to taking Ms. Waterhouse to the Premier's office and asking them to yes. help with her, call, help serve her problem. Mm -hmm. This is a intercept occurring on the same day as that call, 18th of October 2017, but this time with Mr. Leong rather than yeah. with Ms. Berejiklian. Uh -huh. Hello, mate. So are you? Yeah, I'm well. Where are you? Oh, I'm driving to the city. To oh, right. Ah, oh, that's good stuff. Yeah. Where are you? I'm just about to go to a... Uh... Um, this says the call date time was the 3rd of November, not the 18th of October. Is that the correct... I'm, I'm grateful, Commissioner. I may have a, mis a misreference. Pardon me for a moment. We might actually just come back to the back to that one, if we may, Commissioner. I think yes. I've got a wrong reference in in, in my notes. I apologise for that, Mr. Maguire. Um, do you recall whether you provided a, assistance or advice to Ms. Waterhouse as to what she should do in light of the meeting with Mr. Souter? In, in other words. You seem to recall a meeting with Mr. Souter where there were some discussions between Ms. Waterhouse, Mr. Souter and you regarding the issues that she was having, mm -hmm. which we might describe in general terms the roads issue. Yes. Do you recall whether you provided any further assistance to Ms. Waterhouse in that area other than setting up the meeting of the kind that we have identified so far? Uh, I can't recall directly what other assistance I gave. I do recall... Uh, seeing a letter somehow um, that Miss Waterhouse constructed about the issues. Um, and I do recall there was a meeting with, um, uh, I'm trying to think of the lady's name. Um, it was planning for Western Sydney or infrastructure. Do you mean, gra do you mean the Greater Sydney Commission? I think that's to? the name of it, yes. And you're referring to Dr Hill? That's the lady, yes. So we'll come back to the detail of that. But you're referring before to a letter. That was a letter between who and who? Um, I have to see the letter to recall it. Um, well, but I know there was a detailed letter about the issues. Let me try and help you this way. Volume 16, page 51. Exhibit 250, also volume 16, page 51. Do you see there a letter to Mr. Souter? Thank you for thank you for taking your time to meet briefly yesterday and then providing information regarding the Smart West Sydney proposal. Do you see that there? Yes. Is that the letter that you're referring to a moment ago? Uh, no. So it was a letter, as best you can recall, it was a letter from who to who? Uh, from Miss Waterhouse. It may be the letter. Um, just flick I, a few pages just so you can see the content. See there's a map identifying the site, identifying at least in part the problem. And if you just have a look near uh, on the previous page, see the two dot points? Yes. What Smart West Sydney Six is twofold. First dot point, recognition and infrastructure planning that the Smart West site with the strategic location will sooner or later be zoned for urban development. Yes. 
and second dot point, road planning to recognise the Western Airport precinct and accommodate access from the Northern <laughs> Road alignment. Can you see that there? Yes, that could be the letter then, yes. And is it consistent with your recollection that that was the two uh, road or planning related issues that Ms Waterhouse had as you understood it? Yes. And that you sought to assist her with? Yes. And so you're saying that this letter that's on the screen is possibly the letter that you're referring to before? Yes. But I take it from your answers, you, you, you're not 100% sure, there may be some other... I'm not 100% clear, but... Um, but is it right to say that you've provided assistance to Ms Waterhouse as to the approach that she should, talk, should take in relation to lobbying for what she sought to achieve, which is the two dot points, or at least principally the two dot points that we can see on the screen? My recollection would be that, that she would be advised to write that letter um, to Mr Souter uh, or to the person that was addressed to uh, after having advice from the meeting that we referred to before. And so Mr Souter may have said, well, send me a letter so that I can put it, put it through the process. Yes, I, I would assume that's the case. But do you at least agree that on one or perhaps more than one occasion you gave Ms Waterhouse some advice as to, for example, who she should write to, yes. who she should chase yes. up, who she should speak to, who yes. she should not speak to? Yes, I agree. And I'll just give you an example of that for your comment. We'll move to the 23rd of October 2017. This was intercept 3049, exhibit 259. This is a few days after the letter that we just saw. Hello, Louise. How are you? Fabulous, Daryl. How are you? Good, Daryl. Good. Have I got no, you to be my home? No, no, it's all right. We're just, I just got back to the office. I'm sitting here talking to the girls. Oh, great. Okay. Mm. I just wanted to touch base on a couple of things. One mm -hmm. is to see if you heard anything from that nice young man that was, uh, that you went to the uh, policy for parliamentary liaison officer. No, he meant to come back to you is he okay? directly. Yep, okay. yep. Well, do I just wait and see, or do I? Did he give him you? Did, did he give you your, his card and number? Yes, he did, and I sent him that email, but him. I've never heard a thing from him since then. What What day was that? That was last Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Well, the house was sitting, so give it till uh, give it till about Wednesday, and then then go back to him. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. They've uh, released the Greater Sydney plans today or the weekend. Yeah. Mm. And um, I just can't believe how short-sighted they are, to be very honest with you, because they've... <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. And I'm, I just think they've got an ulterior motive. I think they're trying to um, delay the area that we're in to, to do all their acquisitions for roadways, which I can understand too, but... This is Lucy Turnbull. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've always said she shouldn't be there. She shouldn't yeah. be there. That I don't know why they ever appointed her in the first place. It was dumb. It was yeah. one of my best choices. Probably no one wants to get rid of her. Yeah, well, they Shame. can't, can they? Mm. Well, that's, that's the, problem. the problem. You put someone like that in, you can never get rid of them. That's the problem. Yeah. That's the thing the is that, um, as all our planners and even other people say, it's just daft because they're relying on all this fragmented land which will never be developed because no one can ever agree on anything. Mm. And where we've got large, you know, huge holdings, which would just be so quick and easy to do, mm. they're sort of you know, putting it into obscurity. Yeah, well, um, I think that the question you've asked now will actually it will have opened the door for you mm. to um, pursue that. I mean, mm. you know, the, the problem is, the problem is they're there doing this. I don't think they've got a frigging clue. Mm. Um, and and it's being driven by a woman who, who shouldn't be there. Um, mm. and I don't know that she's that eminently qualified to do all this big picture stuff. And there are lots of agendas. Mm. There are lots of agendas. Um, my advice... Email back to the young fella. Uh, do it today. Say, so, look, I spoke to you Wednesday. I haven't had communication what's happening. Mm -hmm. Just keep the pressure on him. And then just CC me in on, on the emails, OK? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Um, mm -hmm. Just because I don't want them to say, oh, well, look, it's all solved now because the GSC says this. And the problem we're up against is they're going to say, oh, well, look at the GSC. They're not mm -hmm. allowing for any development in that area, so why should we put a road there? Well, mm -hmm. what we're saying is at least have the possibility to make a road in the future if it's needed, because mm -hmm. if, you, if you put it down in obscurity, you're never going to get it out. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the orbital road on the plans today goes through our site, but I can't, you know, I don't know that they're going to give us an on or off ramp because mm -hmm. 
you know, they're, they're expensive items, aren't they? So this yeah. northern road is the logical connection for us. Mm-hmm. That's right. So, so, so just keep the pressure on there and just keep emailing, okay? Okay, great. Thank right you. Right. And um, I did tell um, a couple of the different people from Tonga about, you know, our discussions about the prison, so I look forward to if there's anything that does mm. come up from the corrective department. Well, that's already gone to them, so I've already done that. Uh, that's underway. Fabulous. Thank you. All right. Nice to okay. talk to you. Bye. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. Mr. McGuire, do you agree that that call provides an example of the kind of advice that you're giving to yes. Ms. Waterhouse from time to time as to how to seek to achieve her objectives, yes. principally those objectives that we saw in the two dot points of the letter? Yes. Right? And would you agree that around about this point in time, your efforts shift to some degree in that as at September it looked like you were quite confident that the country garden sale of the land might take place, whereas a little bit later, we're now in October, you're concerned that the prospects of Country Garden Australia purchasing the Smart West land uh, may well be less than what you thought they were in September. Can you repeat that, please? In September of 2017, which is really where we started this morning, yes. 5th and 6th of September 2017, you seem to be quite confident of a sale of the Smart West land occurring and you receiving a substantial payment, correct? Correct. Now that sale didn't ultimately occur, is that right? That's correct. And do you agree that you were assisting Ms Waterhouse in attempting to fix some of her issues, including in relation to roads and including in relation to planning, with the possibility that instead of there being a sale to Country Garden, there might, for example, be an investment by another investment investor? Yes. And that was part of why you were assisting Ms Waterhouse in relation to roads issues and planning issues. You were hoping that they would assist in uh, in improving the position for Ms Waterhouse to be able to either sell or, if not, develop the land. So and, right. and, and put a safer access for the 30 or 40 residents. That's correct. But, but those two things are connected, aren't they, in the yes. sense that with a, with a better, more convenient and safer access to the Northern Road it's more likely that one can obtain an investor to assist in the development of the site. At Eric. some point in the future, yes. And that was one of the things that was weighing in your, on your mind or one of the factors that led you to be involved in the activities that you were engaged in in relation to that site? Yes. Right? And the call that we heard, that wasn't a one-off, was it? You were involved in giving Ms Waterhouse advice directly? Yes. And to assist her in her uh, negotiations or her lobbying efforts with public officials. Is that right? Yes. I'm just going to play you another example. We're now going to move forward to the 14th of November 2017. I'm not going to play all of the intercepts relevant to this question. I'm focusing on, the, on what I think are the key ones. This is 3961. I'm going to play you two extracts from this intercept, it's exhibit 260, 3691, I may have got the figures the wrong way around, 3691, 14 November 2017. <laughs> Hi, Daryl. G'day, how are you? Fabulous. Good. Listen, I've just done the rounds yes. and um, uh, I've been to uh, infrastructure slash uh, transport mm -hmm. and I've been to planning and uh, spoken with them. They've both now got it. They're going to go and put their heads together and deal with this, um, uh, I guess, the issue with roads, not wanting to do anything. So they're all going to um, come back to me, I guess, They'll come back to me within a couple of days. Oh, that's um, great. They can't see why it's a problem. Um, and I said, well, there's just no, there is no energy uh, to deal with this. Um, they basically say, no, we're not dealing with that now. That's the end of the story. And I said, this is stupidity. So anyway. Um, it's I it's very upsetting. I, I was at a, a talk that the Premier gave you, and she spoke so well. Yeah. And... Um, she said about all the infrastructure, and I put my hand up for the Dorothy Dix question. She yeah. said, look, I'm so excited about all this infrastructure, 
but I'm also concerned that with the deadlines upon us, like with the airport, that we're not going yeah. to be future-proofing. And she said, oh, no, Louise, we, we believe me that it's we're future-proofing everything. I thought, well, she doesn't know about everything. Because write her a letter. Do Should I? Now. That's what I was going to ask you. Also. You write her a letter now. Dear Premier, lovely to see you. Gave a yes. great speech, you know. Yes. Yes. The recording there. Rub, rub the ego. We'll just, we'll just pause that recording there because I don't need the remainder of that segment at least. Is it consistent with your recollection that you suggested to Ms Waterhouse during the course of that telephone call that she might want to write a letter to yes. the Premier? Yes. And do you recall that during the course of that telephone intercept you gave uh, you gave Ms Waterhouse the what you described, I think, as the personal email address yes. of, Ms. of of Premier Berejiklian? Yes. Right? And when we say personal email address, that's a email address that members of parliament and ministers are able to use in order to have direct access to that particular individual. Yes, it's right? an internal system. Mm. The, um, the, the practice, is this right, the practice is that each minister has what I'll call a direct email address, is that right? Yes. And is it right that those email addresses, at least as a matter of practice, are supposed to be kept between members of parliament and ministers rather than being more broadly... Uh, broadly provided? Yes, they're occasionally given out, but yes, basically yes. Would you agree that it was a breach of Ms Berejiklian's privacy and perhaps security to provide that email address to yes. Ms Waterhouse? Yes. Pardon me for a moment, Commissioner. I just want to check something. I'm going to play the second excerpt. This is of 3691 Exhibit 260. There'll be a part of the recording that won't be broadcast, so there'll be a a, uh, a pause, as it were, during the course of which Mr Maguire explains what I've described as the direct email address. Need to pause for a moment while Mr. Granger finds the right button to press. He's outside the room. <laughs> so we'll play extract number two, 3691, exhibit 260, noting that there'll be a gap in the audio at one point. Mm. Well, that's that's why I just gave and gave him a serve. Yes. So, um, th so they I'll now write got that today to um, the you, you write it today and just say, just rubber ego yeah. and say, you know, I didn't well, want she to. She did a good job. She's yeah. great. I'm a great fan. Mm. I think she's fantastic. Yeah. So, 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 what address do I send it to? Just to. Uh, I'll... go directly to her to private email. Yes. Okay, and just blame me. Just just put a PS note, you know, the address was given to you uh, okay. by me if you like. I doubt. Okay. And so how much information do I give her? Do I just give her a snapshot of the one Spit page or do I give her the, the letter I've sent to you? Spit it out in a in a one or two pager. 
Yeah. All right, okay. this is what you've been trying to do, and these yes. people are getting in your way. Just kill them. Just off okay. with their heads. Okay. But thank take you. Take no prisoners. You know. We well, I might. Ring, you, if you're around, I might ring you with the draft and just see if you think it's so too far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Daryl. Actually, you probably you, you probably better off not to dog me in it. Just send it to her. I will. Okay. She she yeah. won't mind. No. I'll just I'll walk down and tell her. That way, I won't dob you in because that way it, it, it um, no, well, puts the one can't, can't. Well, can't. the fact is, all that stuff is um, eye-cackable and um, mm, no, I don't and, want to do any freedom of information or whatever. Yeah, all this rubbish they go on with. Yeah. So yeah. just send it directly to her personal one. Mm. Just say, look, I didn't want to contradict you in public, but no. but this is what's happening, and just yes. relate it. She'll she'll light yeah. a fire. Mm. Great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Fabulous. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Bye. 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 Mr. McGuire, why were you concerned that? This stuff is um, eye cackable. Oh, I just wanted to pass on the, the email address the, to my best recollection. Well, wasn't it a little bit more than that? You were concerned that if you were identified in communications associated with what, what I might describe as the Smart West issue, that it might be called into question your involvement in that matter. I don't know whether that really crossed my mind. Well, you're at least concerned, weren't you, that the kind of extensive activity that you're involved in in relation to the Smart West site, if known, might have lead, led to questions being asked as to the appropriateness of the member for Wagga Wagga being closely involved in assisting someone achieving their development interests or sale interests in Western Sydney. Do you agree? No, I agree. And... Would Miss um, Waterhouse have been regarded as a property developer, Mr Maguire? Well, I never regarded it as a property developer. I mean, she wanted to develop the property, yeah. but um, at that point it was grazing land. Um, it was a farm, and we even talked about adjusting some cattle on that land. Um, but she wanted to, to develop it as an adjunct to the airport, did she not? Yes, she did. That was Mr Waterhouse's, Mr Bill Waterhouse's vision when he bought that land 30 or 40 years ago. And well, were you concerned that it would be seen as improper for you to be assisting Ms Waterhouse in particular in making direct contact with the Premier, who would have been, as we've already discussed today, um, engaged on behalf of the government in making decisions in relation to the land at Badgeries Creek? No, I don't think... I, I wasn't concerned. I Perhaps I should have been, but I, I can't say that I was Commissioner. You both seem to have shared a concern about it, this um, communication being disclosed because you referred to ICAC and the Jipper Act and Ms Waterhouse referred to the Freedom of Information legislation. Yes. You both seem to have shared a concern that it was yes. not of the appropriate conduct to be engaged in. Yes, Commissioner. Um, but I can't recall what was actually driving that in my mind. You at least accept, don't you, that you shouldn't have used your knowledge of what you described as the private email address yes. in order to assist Ms Waterhouse, correct? I agree, yes, correct. And you also shouldn't have done it to assist yourself in the sense of you're seeking to help Ms Waterhouse in at least the hope that some personal profits might flow to you, yes. correct? There was a reference during that particular intercept, I'm not sure that it was played out aloud, but there's a phrase that was used to the effect that Ms Berejiklian would give it a, quote, tickle from the top. Mm, yes. What did you mean by that, tickle from the top? Oh. My, my thinking at that time was that um, the, the, the bureaucrats uh, weren't taking seriously the issues that um, Miss Waterhouse was raising and brought to the attention of the Premier um, she might um, take an interest or encourage people to take an interest in the real problems that were there. That's the inference tickle from the top, meaning she's at the top of the tree. Mm. <coughs> to your knowledge, did Ms Berejiklian give that letter or any other communications what you call a tickle from the top? I don't know. Or nothing to your knowledge that I don't, she did in response to that particular to, letter? No, I don't, you, I don't believe I know. Do you recall whether you told her about the letter, told her... Something like, have a look out for this letter. A letter's coming or a letter's been. Um, have a look out for it. I don't have a re recollection of, of saying that. I may have. Um, 
I don't recall. Would you at least have a recollection of assisting Ms Waterhouse in drafting the letter or at least proofing it for any comment that you might have? Um, I recall I've seen the letter somewhere. Uh, I think it was, yes, I did see the letter. I can't recall when. Um, and I don't know whether any notations were made or anything. No, I, I did see the letter, but I just can't recall when. But is it right that your best recollection is that you saw the letter and you gave Ms. L Ms. Waterhouse some advice on it, other than either to say this is fine or to yes. make some suggestions yes. on it? Yes, yes. And that happened before, at least as you understood it, the letter was sent. Is that right? Yes. But do you have any recollection of raising the particular letter with Ms. Berejiklian, either in advance of it being received or afterwards? Gee, I can't recall that I did or I didn't. I I don't know. Well, you said in the um, conversation with Miss Waterhouse that you'd walk down and tell Miss yes. Berejikli and it was coming. But I don't know whether I actually did that, Commissioner. I can't recall if I actually did. <coughs> um, I can't recall. So we try and assist this way. 3767, Exhibit 329. Uh, did you get an email from Louise Waterhouse? No. Nope. You will. So send your email. She really pissed off now. So um, about the you know the the airport, mm. they're all passing the bus. So RMS is saying no, no, it's the federal government plan and we have to deliver on it. Federal government saying no, no, RMS are in charge of the roads, mm. just going around in circles. And I said this <laughs> this is fucking typical of of our government with that Brad Cromley in charge. He caused all this problem, you know, bureaucrat passing the buck. Right. Same out at um, Tamelia too. Okay, so Same out at Tamelia. I've got to go mm. see you, All right, bye. Does that refresh your memory that you did tell Ms. Yes. Berejiklian that at least uh, email was either coming or was just about to yes, come? Yes, it does. And for your benefit, at that point in time, the email had not yet been sent, but... There's evidence before the Commission suggesting that it had been sent on the following day, being the 16th of November 2017. Yes. You agree, don't you, that it was a misuse of your office, including your knowledge of the Premier's private email address, to provide that to Ms Waterhouse for her use? Yes. You that? Yes. But you did it because you had hoped that that would be part of a step in the process that would ultimately lead to some personal profits for yes. you. Do you agree? Mr um, Robertson, I just think um, we should. I should remind you the first letter was in fact sent on the 15th and the 16th was a follow-up email which also attached the letter. Yes. Quite so. I think Mr uh, Mr Brown was about to tell me exactly that. <laughs> Apologise for that. My, at least my recollection, someone will tell me if I'm wrong, but both of those two were sent after the call. Yes. Mr Brown confirms that that's right. Thank you, Mr Brown. Now, to your knowledge, did Ms Berejiklian do anything in response to those not, letters? Not to my knowledge. Did you chase her up about it and say, look, what's what's going on with those emails? No, I don't recall. So is it right that so far as you're, as far as you're aware at least, whilst you were seeking to assist Ms Waterhouse in getting her issues the subject of a tickle from the top, mm. There was no such tickle, at least in relation to the letters that we've just identified. So I, I don't know what occurred after that. I don't recall uh, knowing anything that occurred. But you're agreeing with me, I think, in saying that at least so far as you're aware, no steps were taken as a result of the letter that you suggested Ms Waterhouse send to the direct email address of Ms Berejiklian. To the best right? of my recollection, yes. Now, you referred a little bit of time ago to the meeting with, I think, the Greater Sydney Commission. Yes. And could you just explain how that meeting came about? Well, I can't recall how I, how it was actually organised, whether Mr Souter organised it um, or whether I did. I, I just can't recall how the meeting came about. Can I try and help you this way? Volume 16, page 86. This we're moving to the 5th of December 2017. And we 
here showing some messages between your phone and Ms Waterhouse's phone. See there, g'day, I spoke to Melinda Pavey. She will discuss with Jock and come back to you. I will send her your contacts. Did you see that there? Yes, I see that. Melinda Pavey was the Minister for Roads. Yes. Is that the 5th of December 2017? I believe so. Do you know what you asked uh, Minister Pavey to do? Was that connected with this question of Greater Sydney Commission? Um, or was I, it some broader I, issue or perhaps some different issue? I don't know. I don't recall. You don't recall whether it was her who acted as your intermediary, as it were, to set up the meeting with the Greater Sydney Commission on your request? Um, it may have been, or it could have been uh, Jock. It may have been. Would you, would you, as at December of 2017, would you have you had any reason to speak to Ms Pavey about an issue which pertains to Ms Waterhouse? other than the Smart West Sydney site? No, no, no. And so it has to have something to do with either the roads issue or the planning issue that we discussed before. The road issue, right? the road issue, that's what it would but have is been. Is it right that you can't now recall whether you were looking for assist assistance at what might be described as the departmental level or the ministerial level or perhaps the Greater Sydney Commission level? Um, no. Do you agree that in requesting Minister Pavey's assistance. You didn't advise her or her office that you had hoped to make a personal profit in relation to yes, the Smart West Sydney mm. matter? I agree. And you agree that you only made that contact because of that, uh, because, would you rather put it differently? Do you agree that but for that profit motive, you wouldn't have engaged in the kind of communication that we can see evidence of on this SMS? Uh, yes, I agree. So do you recall why um, you contacted Ms Pavey? Well, the, the issue was specifically about uh, the road access yeah. for, for that land and... Um, You're, Ms. I, you and Ms Waterhouse, or at least Ms Waterhouse, had been introduced by you to Mr Souter and you'd, um, the Minister's PLO and you'd discussed it with him. Yes. On this occasion, you appear to have gone directly to the Minister. Uh, it, it may have been a case that Mr. Souter said to me, you need to talk to the minister. I don't know why that occurred. Or that Mr. Souter hadn't yet responded to the letter Ms. Waterhouse sent Or in. perhaps, or yeah, perhaps that's right. I, I'm very scant on the, on, on the detail of, the, of how it came about. That's what I said before. I tender the documents on the screen, volume 16, page 86, uh, text messages between Mr. Maguire and... Ms Waterhouse. Yeah, that will be Exhibit 369. Well, to try and help your recollection around that time, I'll play f uh, Intercept 4309, which is Exhibit 331. This is a recording from the day before the first message that we saw. Mm. Might just assist you with some context the 4th around... Of, 4th of December? 4th of December 2017. I apologise if I misspoke. I'm just um, having dinner with uh, William and um, mm -hmm. at, the, at the Marigold. And then mm -hmm. I'm going to have dinner with... Um, oh, you've been in Sydney tonight? Yeah, because I went to Canberra. So, um, All right, yep, yep. So I went to Canberra to do that meeting this morning. And then I had to come mm -hmm. and meet our friend Louise. And then, uh, because she's having problems, <laughs> big problems now... Mm -hmm. They want to make all her area now a greenfield site and just leave it, lock it up. She's furious. And um, this is the Sydney Planning Commission. So anyway, I met her and, and introduced her to the people. And then uh, William said, oh, can I have dinner with this barley buyer? He's got, um, he malts barley, so he wants 500,000 tonnes of barley a year. And um, Jimmy's here with his delegation who he's had to carry a bubble and whatever. So he said, can you come? So I made him go to both the same restaurant. <laughs> and I was just going from one room to the other. <laughs> How's your trip? Oh, that's hilarious. Again, there was a reference to William in that call. Kim Long. William Long. Mm. And so we, we now know, at least from the calls that I've played you so far, that you mentioned William on at least a couple <coughs> of occasions to Ms Bridgequin. Is that right? Yes. 
does that help your recollection as to whether you had introduced her to Mr. Leong or described who he was, for example? I can't ever recall in introducing William Leong, but I may have introduced him through name recognition uh, uh, at some point. When you say through re name recognition, what do you mean by that? Well, talking about William Leong um, uh, on a number of occasions, she, she may have understood who I meant. Well, you must have at least understood that she understood who you yes. meant, given yes. that you said Correct. William, not William Leong, who happens to be this particular individual in a particular Correct. area. Is that right? Correct. And there was a reference to the Sydney Planning Commission. Do we take that to be a reference to the Greater Sydney Commission? Yes, I would think so. And does that assist your recollection in relation to what we saw on the 5th of December 2017, the next day, as to whether that, that had something to do with a meeting with the Greater Sydney Commission? I thought it said that I'd actually taken them there. There was there was a reference to, uh, I sp you're talking about the 5th of December 2017? The, the um, Intercept, listening to it, said that I'd actually taken them to a meeting. Yes, but at that point in time, at least the Greater Sydney Commission meeting hadn't yet occurred, is that is that right? I suspect so. And so is it consistent with your recollection that around that point in time, you were taking in a number of steps with a view to assisting Ms Waterhouse yes. with what I'll call the roads issue, correct? Yes. And you're also seeking to assist her with what you, what you might call the planning issue, is that right? Uh, yes. Well, the proposal that um, her land be turned into a greenfield site and locked up for, I think you said, decades would have been even worse than the road issue, no doubt. Uh, it was very serious then because, again, that affected um, the whole area and I think recollection, Commissioner, the, the other landholders as well. So, it yes, it was pretty started. serious. That might have been when you started talking about putting cows on the land. Well, um, if it's locked up as a green, as a green field or a, a sink or something, um, I don't know that you'd even be allowed to do that if they want to hold it as a nature reserve or something like that. It just depended, I think. It was a rather large issue, and you've just reminded me of it, I, the significance of it. It was almost a game changer, wasn't it? Oh, well, yes, because... Uh, all of those landholders, including Miss Waterhouse and others, um, uh, basically their land would be worth nothing after holding it on for 30 or 40 years. So, yes, it was a game changer, yes. But the reason you just didn't refer these concerns to, for example, the local member was in the hope of some personal profits for you in due course? I, I did agree? refer it to the local member. Uh, oh. The local member um, was introduced at some point and briefed, I think, by Miss Waterhouse. D didn't you tell Miss Waterhouse specifically not to get the local member involved at one point, but rather to work through the kinds of mechanisms that you had in mind through, for example, the uh, Minister for Roads and the Greater Sydney Commission? I don't recall that I said that. Um, I can't be clear about that, but I, I can be clear that at some point, the local member was introduced to Miss Waterhouse and Miss Waterhouse then um, had the issue taken up by the local member. But I can't be clear about when, but I do know it happened. Let me try and assist you this way. Intercept 4584 exhibits 264. So now the 14th of December 2017, so mm -hmm. about nine days after <laughs> the last message that I showed you. Mm -hmm. How's my friend Daryl? Um, well, Louise, how are you, Dom? Fabulous. Good. Now, um, I got a message from Roads and Maritime today yeah. from the Minister. Yep. And they're going to have the boss of RMS meet with you. That's the okay. message I got today. Yes, well, I was about to write you an email. I got an email from somebody who might be the boss. Let me just Executive see. Executive Director of RMS, yep. Just came through before. Uh, Good. And he's proposed a meeting, and I was about to say, is this you? On, in, on the 18th of January. Now, I'll be away. Our plan is say they could take the meeting, or what do you think? Tell him, tell him you'll be away to the 18th to propose another date. Yes. I think it's better I'm there, don't you? Because then there's a more accountability. Yeah, Correct. thank you. Yeah, and besides, the meeting was for you and nobody else. So Good. that's my view. 
Yeah, yeah, good. Okay, so Thomas Michelle Thomas has written that it's on behalf of John Hardwick, yeah. Executive Director of Sydney. So you're a genius, aren't you? No, no, I'm just a hard working local member. Oh, you're Somebody a Somebody wants to see you get on. Make it happen. I wanted to anyway, I'm going to send you the draft submissions we've got. We've got 30 owners together mm -hmm. for our precinct out there, so I'm very excited about it. And I wanted to ask your thoughts. I'd like to copy some of the people and, and certainly send it to um, Angus Taylor. Do you think I should send it to that local member? To no, I, no, I think you should shut up. Shut up, um, OK. Shut up and keep that to yourself and drop the bomb on the RMS. Yes. OK, don't tell the local members. We all, we all know, you know, that you're working on it. Now's the time to shut up and go and, you know, go for the throat and make it happen and then pull out the list you've got, yes. OK? So they yes. can see you're serious. OK. Um, so tell nobody else now, just um, get all your stuff ready, propose a new date. So does that refresh your memory that at least as at the 14th of December 2017, your advice to Ms Waterhouse was not to tell the local member? You wanted to be closely involved in the process of attempting to fix Ms Waterhouse's issues, in part so you, you could get the credit in the event that that was successful, correct? Uh, yes. And that would increase the prospect that Ms Waterhouse might, or someone else might, look after you in the event of a successful development. Is that right? Yes. When I say look after you, I mean financially, correct? Yes. And I'm going to play you one from the next day, 15 December 2017, 4606, Exhibit 267. Hey, Louise, how are you? Yes, good, thank you. You've good. been a busy man. Oh, well, apparently Melinda Pavey's been batting for you. Oh, isn't that <laughs> um, amazing? Mm, so, so basically she was talking about um, housing. I said, no, 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 that, that they no. don't want to do housing. No, uh, I said there's a whole raft of these people that, you know, are upset that they're going to be locked in mm -hmm. uh, in the noise corridor. And yep. she said, well, there are things we can do. I said, well, um, let me tell you, they're not happy. So she's going to have a briefing for me. I don't know why, but... And I said, have you met with Louise Waterhouse? Yes, we know her, blah, blah, blah. But she doesn't I, know of our issues because she's too high level. Mm. Yeah, well, I'm going to take you to the meeting. Oh, <laughs> fabulous. That's why I want you to have the roads one in January and then you can front up and, and they can solve your problem, OK? OK, so no point in doing it this week before Christmas? No, no you've got no hope of that anyway. No, All right. OK, great. Yeah, so, no hope. Um, that's very exciting. I must say, you know, you're amazing. Ah, oh, well, we I'm try more of you, Daryl. <laughs> Uh, we, we, we just try and help. I mean, this is bullshit. These people are going to be locked in and yeah. can't get out of there. It's crazy yeah. stuff. And, yeah. and it's so unfair. So there's there's some reference to what I think was there described as the Planning Commission. Yes. Did you hear that? And that was a reference to the Greater Sydney Commission. Is that right? Uh, yes. And so your idea was to take Ms Waterhouse along to that particular meeting. Yeah, right? yes. Now, at that point in time, you knew that the Greater Sydney Commission would be disinclined to have a meeting that would discuss site-specific issues rather than perhaps general, member, general matters of policy. Is that right? Uh, no, not in, not in my mind. Um, I'm having trouble recalling in detail um, the arrangement made for the meeting and um, what actually occurred at that meeting. Um, when you say and that, who meeting, actually you arranged the meeting? Well, it was at least procured by you, is that right? Well, I can't recall that I actually made arrangements with the Commission to have that meeting. But it was at least procured in the sense that you asked for it, perhaps through the Minister for Roads' oh, office yes. or perhaps through yes. someone else's office, yes, is that right? Yes, correct. And you decided to bring Ms. Waterhouse along to that particular meeting, is that right? Uh, yes. The meeting that was arranged was a meeting that you likely only would have been able to obtain because you're a Member of Parliament, correct? Um, perhaps. It was a meeting of a kind that involved a briefing of Members of Parliament of the kind that Members of Parliament have access to but not necessarily members of the general public, is that right? Uh, I don't know what briefings were provided to the general public by 
uh, the, the Planning Commission. Well, did you tell the Greater Sydney Commission that uh, one of the reasons that you're interested in having a meeting is your hope that Ms Waterhouse's problems would be fixed and that you might be looked after financially? I can't recall having conversations with the Commission uh, about the arrangements for that meeting or uh, any detail. I, my recollection would be that the, the Minister's office arranged it. I, I can't recall having conversations with them about the specifics of it. But you didn't advise the Minister's office or the Greater Sydney Commission either in advance or during the meeting itself that you had hoped to make some profits out of the Smart West no, proposal? So no. And in fact, do you agree that, that but for that potential profit motive, you wouldn't have gone to the effort of seeking to set up that meeting? Uh, yes. I'm going to play you, we're going to move a little bit forward in time, move to the next year, and we're going to move to uh, February of 2018, 14 February 2018. I'm going to play an excerpt of that call, uh, which has already been played in public exhibit triple three, six three four eight, starting at 24 minutes and 45 seconds. No, I'm just I'm just trying to tr trying to let you think about what you need to do and all that stuff. That's all. Well, I, this is what Margaret said. To us. I said, well, you know, I'm doing nothing to the end of the year, so I just want to see how this boy goes and whether I can do get these things over the line. That's why I was late for the things. I'm working, mm. working, working. Mm. I got a meeting tomorrow morning with Joe and those guys. Try and tie that up. I'm working bloody hard. Because Tom's yard was fucking falling through, and Jimmy's, we got his over the line. It's good. I can't, I can't not go to nothing. I have to go to something. There's no future um, doing things for New South Wales government because you give a job to the Labor Party like that prick. Um, what's his name? Um, Ferrara mm. got a job. Cor corrupt. Yeah. Okay. Keeping Look, this is, and I understand that, but this is the other thing that I'm thinking, right? That I, I need you to process in your head what you want to do, right? But I also need to come to the realisation that it's not got anything to do with me. So I just Correct. Have to, Correct. Right. But, but, that's, but, that's, but that's a bigger picture that I, a bigger issue that I need to think about. I, I just, I just got to thought out, I just got to thought out, you know, with these kids and stuff, what's going to happen. That's all I'm worried about. Yes, I know. That's why I'm mm. giving you space. I'm trying not to stress you. Mm. I just make I'm, trying sure to support, right. I'm trying to support you, not stress you. Mm. In the meantime, I'm working to make the farm pay. I'm working to try and get things over the line. I'm doing all that because I don't want to stay. I want to go. No? But if they push me into a corner, then, then you know I'll have no choice. Mm. I don't want to be pushed into a corner. That's why I'm working hard. That's why I went to the meeting while I was late. I've got tomorrow morning with other people. That's why I'm at the lunch okay, with people. Okay, you don't people. need to explain to me. I just, I'm, I'm working. Just pro I, get, I get that. I'm just trying to process things myself in my own head. That's all. Mm -hmm. You've got to think about your stuff. I've got to think about my stuff. That's all. Mm. Well, I'm working on that, really. I'm going to bed. See you later. Okay, bye. Bye. I'm just playing this now as part of the chronology. We're February of 2018. Yes. One of the things you refer to is... Country Garden has fucking fallen through. Yes. Remember hearing that? Mm. Now, is that a reference to Country Garden not becoming a purchaser of the Smart West site? Um, perhaps, yes. Well, there was no other big deal at that point in time that might have fallen through or deal of any sort that might have fallen through related to Country Garden, is that right? Um, not to the best of my recollection. At least as of September of 2017, you thought there might be a deal between Country Garden and interests associated with the Waterhouses that might pay off all your debts, correct? Yes, yes. 
and that was the thing that had fallen through that you referred to in that yes. conversation, is that right? Yes. And then you said, I've got a meeting tomorrow morning with Joe. With Joe. I take that, that's Joe Allah. Yes. And those guys, and try that up. I'm working bloody hard, etc. Do you recall what you're dealing with with Mr. Allah at that point in time? No, I don't. And you said, and, and Jimmy's, we've got his over the line. Who's Jimmy? That'd be Jimmy Liu. And what, what did you get over the line with Jimmy as at February of 2018? Can you remember? Oh. I'd be, I'd be guessing, but I'd suggest it's to solve his problems with, uh, with uh, UWE. But I can't recall specifically what that referred to, but I, I would, I'd say that it has to do with UWE. Is it right that at this point in time you're getting a bit concerned about making sure you've got something to go to in the event that you retire at the 2019 election, which by that point is only a year or so away? I wouldn't say it was my ultimate concern. It certainly was a consideration, but it wasn't my ultimate concern. Well, one of the things you said, said, we've, Jimmy's, we've got his over the line, that's good. I, I can't, I can't go to nothing. Remember hearing that? Yes, I heard it. And that's your concern about making sure that there's post-parliamentary employment, as it were, is that right? Well, opportunities, yeah, uh, yes. Well, when you say opportunities, you mean opportunities in the sense of perhaps being on a board, perhaps being a consultant, or something on those, or something on those lines, yes. some, some, something to go, something to go to. Yes. But is it right that as at February of 2018, you were concerned regarding that matter, and that was one of the reasons why you were working bloody hard? Uh, yes. In part, you were working bloody hard in relation to the Smart West matter, is that right? Oh, yes. Again, as part of setting you up in terms of a financial position mm. going forward. So. Yeah, and post-parliament, yes. Did you see opportunities um, of working with Miss Waterhouse in connection with the Smart West development once you retired? I had thought about it, but I, I really, yeah, I had thought about there might be some opportunities, but we never discussed that. What sort of role did you see yourself possibly well, I, taking? Well, um, I can't be clear on what kind of role I was thinking about, but I thought there would be some kind of opportunity um, to to uh, engage with uh, potential uh, people to invest and uh, to be uh, tenants, etc. Um, I I considered it, but I can't say that I considered it deeply. What about with Jimmy, Jimmy Lou? We saw or well, we discussed yesterday that at least at one point yes. you contemplated potentially working with him. Yes, I, I, I did. Um, uh, I did consider that, um, and I took those steps that are recorded now, where uh, I sought advice, um, but nothing was concrete. And I thought, well, uh, there may be something into the future. Uh, we had only had a brief discussion on um, the the interest that, that Jimmy was suggesting, which was to join a board, but that's as far as it had really gotten. Well, did Jimmy make you an offer, either a board position or some other offer in advance of your retirement from Poland? He, he, he suggested that, that um, when I retire that uh, I might consider or he might consider um, appointing me to his board. Um, I didn't quite understand what that all meant um, because it was fairly, um, uh, uh, what's the word, um, lightly touched on. Th there was no specific detail. It was just, you know, we'd like, we'd like you to think about joining us, that, that kind of suggestion. And, and did, that, did that happen only at the time that I showed you yesterday when you sought the advice of the Parliamentary Ethics Advisor? Or was there some other offer that was made a little bit closer to the time at which you were hoping to retire from Parliament? No, my recollection is about the time that um, that uh, I wrote to the ethics advisor and and asked um, for advice on on um, 
positions on boards. Um, in-depth conversation, I merely sought some guidance um, and Jimmy didn't come back with any uh, offers that I uh, can recollect of any detail. Or was any any offers of any kind, so far as you can recall? Um, perhaps uh, some consulting of some description. Um, if my recollection is right, towards sourcing product from the Riverina um, for export or something like that. That's my best recollection. So does that mean there were two two examples? One was the possibility of joining the board in respect of which you spoke to the ethics advisor? Yes. And there was another one that might have had something to do with products or something on those lines? Yeah, it was just a, a, a discussion about what's possible, what's not. It, it, it was scant on detail, but... Um, it was something I, I think I could have considered on retirement. With um, all these possible um, engagements with Mr Liu were post-retirement, why would you get advice from the ethics advisor? Oh, well, the, su the suggestion at some point was um, about joining them now. Yes. But um, so I sought advice yes. and I chose not to do anything and... Uh, we didn't have any further discussions about that uh, particular board position um, because UWE, of course, were in um, trouble by then. Um, so it didn't progress. And I think the note we saw from the ethics advisor was that he um, provided you with a policy on secondary employment. Yes, he did. Which would have demonstrated that you could, in fact, have taken up that board position while you were Member of Parliament? Yes, I could have. Uh, Why did you draw back from it, nevertheless? We, 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 Jimmy and I never had those discussions. It never progressed past the information I was given. We never progressed uh, the, you know, the in-depth discussion about what being on a board for UWE meant. We, we just didn't have that discussion. It's not very hard to understand what being on a board means. Well, it is when you're dealing with a Chinese company that um, they, they seem to structure them differently. And I didn't fully understand how UWE's board actually um, was constructed. It's not it like not a, a normal board. Is it not a company incorporated in Australia? Uh, yes, it is. Well, why would it be incorporated in any way other than other Australian companies? Um, well, because of I, I suggest and I think about the shareholders that own the company and I don't know that um, – I don't know how – it was actually structured with the appointment of, of advisors and or directors. I truly didn't, uh, and we never, ever sat down to talk about what meaning on, uh, being appointed to his board actually meant. So we're talking about February 2018. Yes. And um, what was the timing of the um, crisis which um, had with the 51% shareholder, Shanghai Dairy Group? pulling out? I think it was before then. Yes, and had well that been before. resolved by February 2018? Uh, well, no, I, I, I think it, I can't be clear on, on the activities that actually occurred with regards to um, Shanghai Dairy being resolved. And um, there was an issue that the board of or the directors of the Shanghai Dairy Group had changed. I know that it had been ongoing for quite some time, um, but I can't recall that it was fully resolved. But the UWE business, which was um, oat and hay, was that still viable and going ahead? In 2018, yeah. oh, I can't be clear. Um, I can't be clear that it was still operating or it had been mothballed by then. Um, I mean, when it was going, it was, it was producing and exporting um, fantastically. But I can't recall when the troubles got so bad that it, it basically had to be shut down and mothballed because of the disagreement between UWE and um, Shanghai Dairy Group. And were the um, was that Shanghai Dairy Group um, a private company in China or was it something controlled by the government? No, it was a government company and a um, uh, very large, massive company as most Chinese government-owned companies are, and they're structured so that they're, um, you know, a, a legitimate company, um, but they're, they're owned and financed by a government 
and initially what caused the problem uh, was that the, the the directors of Shanghai Dairy Group were changed, which can happen in an instant in China, and that's when the, the troubles with UWE really erupted. And so were you concerned about the possibility of going onto a board with Chinese government representatives, I was either more, directly or controlling some of the members of the board? I was more concerned about um, the fact that if UWE failed, the plan was that um, they would expand their plants across New South Wales and Northern Victoria to source product, and the next one slated would have been for Wagga Wagga. And we actively talked about that with Jimmy. Um, that was the vision, and uh, I pursued that for our industrial area. It would have meant uh, 30 jobs for the, the factory and exports. It would have meant a new business for the export area, and I thought it was exciting. So I actively worked hard um, to, to try and get an outcome for them so they could build more factories and locate one in my electorate. Did anything ever come of that? Well, UWE, well, we actually went, uh, Commissioner, uh, we spent some time. Uh, I went um, to my local councils. I went to Lockhart Council. I went to um, Wagga City Council. And I took um, Jimmy, Mr Liu. We looked at some sites. I introduced him to um, uh, landowners that had already had some buildings that may have been suitable. I showed him the new intermodal terminal that was slated to be built for Wagga Wagga, which is well and truly underway now. And I wanted him to, to establish a business uh, for our city. Um, so that's why I really took an interest in, in UWE. I didn't want them to fail. Mm. Is it right to say, though, that in 2018 you were hoping, at least in your post-parliamentary career, to have some business relationship with Mr Liu? Some, some kind of a relationship, yes. Can you recall whether he gave you any particular offer in that area? No, I don't recall that there was a particular offer. Um, we, we'd had brief conversations about joining a board, um, some consultancy. I, it wasn't deep in detail. It was merely um, talk. That's my recollection. I just want to try and help your recollection this way. Mm. 8502, 3rd of May 2018, a very short excerpt. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I'll tell you tonight, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy um, made me an offer. All right, well, you stay, away, you stay away, please. So I've just jumped forward to May just to see if this helps your mm. recollection. Mm -hmm. Jimmy's made me an offer, you say? Yes. Do you recall what that offer was in May of 2018? No. Recall, is it the same as the offer, at least suggestion, back in 2017 of a possible board position? Or I can't recall what it was. Is it possibly some other offer? I can't recall what it is. But at least at this point in time, in 2018, you're looking for something to go to, is that right? Yes, we were having discussions, yes. And in the call that I played to you of February of 2018, you talked about not wanting to be backed in a corner. Do you remember hearing yes, that? Yes, yes. What did you mean by not wanting to be backed in a corner? Mm, I can't recall. I, I can't well, do you want to just reflect on, reflect on that? Why, why would you be concerned about being backed into a corner. You're saying that in the context of the various hard work you're doing to get things off the line, get, get things over the line and things of that kind. I can't recall why I used that term or phrase. Um, I that, have a recollection of the of the term or phrase, but I, I, I just can't recall that. Is it right to say that in your communications with Ms Berejiklian around that point in time, by which I mean February 2018 and going forward for the next couple of months, you were at least keeping informed as her informed as to the kinds of things that you were thinking about. Is that right? Mm, yes. From the call, 
at least as I heard it, she's in effect saying to you, look, this is a matter for you to work out what you're going to do. So yes, no, yes. There was never any suggestion of any financial intermingling of your financial affairs between no. you and Ms. Berger Clean, is no, that right? that's right. Um, but at, about at that point in time, had you made clear to her that you're intending to resign at the next election? Or was that still up in the air, at least, as between you and her? Can you remember? I can't remember clearly when I told her it was happening. Um, I can't be clear about that. Um, in relation to those, in relation to communications with Ms Berejiklian around that time, by which I mean in 2018, mm. when you're trying to set yourself up to make sure you're not going to nothing, mm. did you take a similar approach to what you and I have already discussed? Namely, you gave her some information, at least in a general way, but there was a line at which you would not give her too much by way of details. Is that, is that My fair? best recollection would be yes. And is that for the same reason you explained before, namely you didn't want to put her in a position where you were trying to avoid her putting in a put, being put in a difficult position where she might be aware of matters that might be the subject of some criticism of her or some requirement that she should take some action? I'd call, her, I'd call it burden her with detail, yeah. Well, was it just about burdening with detail or was it a concern that you might be doing things that might result in some criticism and you wanted to limit the way and the extent to which no, you were fi fixing not, it with knowledge? Not with UWE, not with UWE. Well, um, what about with anything around that point in time? Um, I think the, 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 the biggest issue on my mind was the UWE problem at, around that time. I can't be sure of the dates, but, um, I mean, that, that was... That was just huge. Um, that, that I think, it was the issue that was revolving and was the priority at the time. When you're referring to the UWE issue, do you mean the circumstances in which you were uh, suggesting you might go to China to deal with the concern about Bright Food Group? Th that's and that's what I'm referring out. to, and I can't recall the dates and things. Well, can that I help was. you this, this way? That's... That's in 2017 rather than in 2018. Yes, that you're principally engaged in that in that activity. Does that, and and does that from then on, UWE had challenges. I'm quite sure, relating to the non-payment um, accounting, uh, there was a whole raft of things. Uh, I, I still think that was the priority. UWE was the priority, in, at least in your in it your mind. Is that what you're saying? Saving them, keeping them operating. That was. My priority, yes. but but you were looking at a series of possible options in terms of what to go to in your future career. Is that right? I was thinking about that, yes. And to the extent that you held things back from Ms. Berejiklian, are you saying that's because you didn't want to burden her with the detail? Is that, is that what and, and because there was nothing, um, nothing that I can recall um, of any substance. It was merely hypothetical and talk. Um, and so, can I assist you here? 15th of February 2018, 6356. Was that 3rd of May 18? I'm so sorry. Is that 3rd of May 18 one an exhibit? Uh, yes, it is. It's exhibit number okay. 334. Thank you. Okay, back to February. I'm sorry to jump around, but it's okay. the connected topics. 15th of February 2018, 6356, which is exhibit 332. So you're going to get a meeting from uh, a request from Sanito as well. Mm. They they're owed twenty million by Norsk, mm. and they want to be bidders on the. Um, mm. They want to be bidders because they've got to get their money back, mm. and um, but they need trees, mm. and uh, they can't they can't survive without them. Mm. So nobody will invest because you can't get the raw material. Mm. So you know you'll have jobs to go down in Albury too. Anyway, so we're working on that. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, things are good. I introduced my little friend to them, and um, they, they were talking when I left them, which is good news. Mm. You know my little friend? Not really. Don't worry. You I don't, do. I don't need to know. Who's your, which little friend are you talking about? With the polished head. <laughs> and um, so he was down there. I introduced mm. him, which was good. Mm. You don't need to know what for, but mm. it's good. Mm. They're all frustrated still with planning. So, uh, absolutely frustrated. Still no decisions. Mm. Who was the friend with the polished head? Oh, it would have been Joe. You'd introduced Joe to Ms. Berejiklian before, is that right? 
she already knew Joe from my recollection. Why were you why were you using code in that call in the sense of not referring to Joe or Mr. LR, referring to your little he little friend with the polished head? Oh, I don't know. I don't recall why. I... Why did you say that you were meeting with your friend with the polished head, but you don't need to know what for? Um, to keep information from her. Why? On a need to know basis. But why would you only do it on a need to know basis? I'm not a burden her with, with any details she didn't need to know. Or well, is, that, is, that, is that the reason you didn't want to burden her with additional details or were you concerned that you didn't want to fix her with information that might require her to take some action no, or just, might lead her to some criticism? I, I just didn't feel that she needed to know. But I'm trying to understand why, I'm sorry. Well, I, I, my best recollection or my um, uh, answer to you is that you know, there were things happening, uh, as you know, around the place. I just didn't think she needed to know whatever it was we were talking about. It, 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 um, it uh, didn't need to be said. So you're saying that the reason you use words of that kind was that you didn't want to burden with detail as opposed to didn't want to burden her with information that might not reflect well on you or perhaps her? Um, I'd suggest her that it, that wouldn't reflect well on her. That, that was at least one aspect of why you drew the line at the amount of information that you would tell her, is that right? Yes, that's right. You were concerned that some of what you were doing might reflect badly on her, is that right? Uh, it could, possible. Not just in this area, but in the other things that you and I have discussed over the last couple of days, do you yeah. agree? Yes. Are we pleased to exhibit 265, volume 16, page 116. We've had a little bit of a diversion, but I'm going to come back to the Smart West matter. Yes. And we're going to go, I'm going to show you a file note taken by Dr. Hill, then the CEO of the Greater Sydney Commission, 12th of March 2018. And then just before that comes up, I take it you've got a recollection of that meeting? Very vague. Um, you I, were, I don't even know where it occurred, that meeting. Yeah, you at least recall that you were present and Ms Waterhouse was present, correct? Um, I have a vague recollection of that meeting. Terribly vague. Is that vague recollect Under that vague recollection, do you recall Ms Waterhouse being present at the meeting as well? I really can't recall um, where that meeting was held, which office. Um, and uh, But I'd agree that Miss Waterhouse uh, may have been there, yes. And Dr Hill was present, you remember that? Um, I guess, yes. I, I don't... Yes, she would have been present, of course. And some other government officials are present as well, is that right? Uh, yes. Do you agree that you made it clear during the course of that meeting that you were uh, making representations on behalf of and was supporting the position of Ms Waterhouse? I, I can't remember the, how the meeting actually um, developed and evolved. I can't even remember who chaired the meeting. Um, the, the, the details are really scant in my mind. Do you at least recall that it was a meeting that you wanted to be convened for the purposes of promoting Ms Waterhouse's position in relation to the Smart West site? The, yes, that I'd approached the Minister about and Mr Souter, that's correct. And you made it clear during the course of the meeting that you were being supportive of Ms Waterhouse's position, is that right? Um, I can't recall what I, what I made clear at that meeting. Did you tell anyone at the meeting, or perhaps in advance of it, or perhaps afterwards, that you had hoped that in the event that Ms Waterhouse was able to obtain appropriate investment in relation to her site, that you would obtain some profit in relation no. to that matter? No. Can we go please to volume 16, page 116, exhibit 265. What I'm showing you here is a, a note that was taken by Dr Hill in relation to the meeting. Mm -hmm. 
you see there, there's a series of participants who are there identified, including you. Yes. If we then just 